Okay, and we're live. A pleasant Monday afternoon to everyone. Good afternoon to our participants uh, in Zoom and good afternoon to our FB Live viewers. So it's another week of fun e-learning session powered by Ariva Academy. And today's topic is data privacy concerns during a pandemic, protecting personal data in time of COVID-19. My name is Irish Malonda Samson and I'm your host. And joining me is my co-host and moderator, Mr. Howell Mabalot. Hello, sir. Hello, Miss Irish. Happy Mother's Day to you. Thank and all, you. And Thank all the moms, you. to all the moms uh, who are watching us now. And yes. Happy Mother's Day to uh, all the super moms out there. Oh, isa ka so, doon yeah. sa mga Wonder Women. Yeah. Okay. Sir so, Howell, let us greet our out-of-the-country participants. And they are from Angola. Hello and welcome to our e-learning session. Our participants from New Delhi, India, Jakarta, Indonesia, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, Doha, Qatar, Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, Singapore, Sharjah, United Arab Emirates, Dubai, United Arab Emirates. Our participants from Los Angeles, Boston, and Chicago, USA. Thank you for joining us today. Wow. Okay. And would, we would like also to uh, greet our um, participants from DepEd, Federal Land Inc., GSIS, Philippine Ports Authority, and Social Housing Finance Corporation. Hello there. Thank you for joining us today. Yan. Okay. Rose Mitihano from OGCC. Hello, ma'am. Good afternoon. And in order for us to have a smooth flow of our e-learning session, here are the house rules and reminders. Okay, so for those of you who are first-time viewers of our webinar, please type in the chat box, hi. So we would like to know if you are first-time viewers, okay? Hi, Sir Roger. Roger Abada. Hello, Sir. Michael Lopez. Tell us also where are you from so we can greet you later. Okay. Ms. Dalisa, Neil Fernandez, Annalyn, hello. Erica, Jasper, Trisha from Fast Cargo Logis Logistics. Good afternoon, ma'am. Okay. And let's do a sound check. In order for you to um, hear as loud and clear, you will be needing a good quality headset. Okay, and use the following codes. Type in 111 in the chat box now if you can hear us loud and clear and we are audible. Okay, so far 111. Pierre, Sheila, Robert, Rosalia, thank you. Raisa, Christopher, loud and clear. Okay, moving on. 222 means you cannot hear us. 2121 means the sound is breaking or there's a log. And question mark if you don't understand anything. But so far, 111, we're all loud and clear and good, okay? And next, we will be having a quick break later after the presentation of our guest speaker and before we move on to our question and answer portion. For question and answer guidelines, participants' microphones will be temporarily disabled by the administrator during discussion to avoid interruptions. Questions will be entertained after each topic of the session. For questions and clarifications during the provided time after each topic, please click the raise hand button for the administrator to enable the microphone for live questions. Yes, we will entertain live questions later, okay? Type in your questions at the Q&A box, not in the chat box, but Q&A box. One question at a time will be entertained. For comments and feedback, please scan this QR code. This QR code will be directed to our feedback form. So please send us your comments, suggestions, topics to discuss for us to improve our future e-learning sessions. And now to discuss the data privacy concerns during a pandemic, protecting personal data in the time of COVID-19, Mr. Howell Mabala, please do the honors in introducing our guest speaker. Of course, Ms. Irish. Our speaker for today is currently the head of legal department of a publicly listed food group with international brands and affiliates and is legal counsel to various job contractors uh, and several local and foreign companies as well that are doing business in the Philippines. 
He is a consistent leadership awardee at Ateneo de Davao University and Far Eastern University. Our speaker had leadership roles in youth and non-governmental organizations, such as CAYA by USAID, National Youth Parliament as Secretary General, the Mindanao Young Leaders Parliament, the Ateneo Student Leaders Assembly, and was among the Davao Youth Ambassadors and a champion debater locally and internationally. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, let's all welcome Attorney James Ear True. James, sir, Attorney James Earl. Hello, hello. Attorney James Earl, how are you? Hi, hi, how are you? Hi, sir. It's a pleasure hello, sir. To, to moderate this and learn from you, sir. All right. Yes, thank you for the warm welcome and the generous introduction, Sir Howell. Sir, uh, that's nothing compared to what you will give us today. Oh. <laughs> uh, so, shall we begin? Sir, so what will happen is uh, I will be fading out of the FB Live. You, although right. you may still, still see me via Zoom, but at our FB Live, they will see your PowerPoint and you alone. So, take the center stage, the limelight. The first hour is yours. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. So I'll just be sharing my screen, my presentation. Sure, sir. And greetings to people. Are you broadcasting from Davao, sir? Yes, yes. I'm from oh. live from Davao. Oh, and uh, syempre, ang magiting. Ang bayan na magigiting. Oh, that, oh yes, yes. Uh -oh. But I'm having trouble with screen sharing right now. Ah, okay, so Sir Jeff, our technical director, may, may be able right. to help you with that. In the meantime, as you... All right, all right. Here we okay. go. See you, sir. Mm -hmm. Ayan, we can see clearly now, Ayan. sir. Okay. Ayan. Very clear, sir. Thank you. So as we all have been experiencing so far, no, um, we are all in our homes. We are all in our uh, enclosures. Walang nakakalabas. Uh, this pandemic has brought a new way of working. Not really that new because work from home, telecommuting has been introduced. And in fact, has been legislated in the Philippines for about a year now. So in that the sense, telecommuting or work from home is not really that new anymore. However, what is new, what is uh, surprising here is that for many companies, for many entities, and for many workers, this kind of uh, work environment is not, they are not yet ready. They are not, uh, this is something as a surprise. This came as a surprise to many of us because of this pandemic. And among other aspects affected by it is not just the, in work, but also in our everyday to day life, how we, how we purchase things. Before we go and queue in the supermarkets, now everything seems to be done online. We, 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 we go to uh, an online market, an online seller, we, we order there, all right? There are so many things that are done online now. And along with that, along with these surprising, sudden changes in our lives, is the concern, heavy and serious concern on data privacy and cyber security. And that's what we're going to learn today. How do we go about, how do we navigate the now? Because this is the now. This is the new setup. But this is not yet the what will be the future, although we are already seeing a bit of it, but we have to prepare for that. But right now, we have to navigate the now. How do we go through this uh, crisis in terms of data privacy and cybersecurity? All right. So in order to understand our data privacy rights, our cybersecurity concerns, we have to consider the three essential uh, principles in data privacy. And that is transparency. When we speak of transparency, we are talking about our right to be informed as to the, the, the type of information, the type of personal information that is being requested of us, and how is this going to be used? Where is it going to be stored? How is it going to be uh, shared, if ever it will be shared? Or uh, how, how is it going to be 
this uh, disclosed and uh, uh, destroyed if after all the processing after after its purpose has been achieved how is our information being gonna be destroyed from the storage all right so that's for transparency now we move on to legitimate purpose what another uh, basic principle general principle of data privacy is legitimacy of purpose it doesn't mean that because i already gave you i shared with you my information that you can already do anything everything about it no that's not how it goes when i give you my personal information you have to consider that you can only use it according to the purpose the legitimate purpose by which i shared it with you and you cannot go beyond that because if you use the information i shared with you for something else then that's going to be a violation already of the second principle of data privacy, which is a legitimate purpose. And lastly, of course, is on proportionality. Proportionality refers to the amount of information necessary to achieve the purpose or to achieve the, the reason why you are asking for my information. So if I am applying for a loan, all you need is my personal and financial background. You don't need the information of my, of uh, the personal information of uh, my family, my friends, probably. Th those are already beyond proportionality, all right? There is one example uh, in a local grocery. I don't think it's a local. I think it's it's uh, everywhere, you know. Uh, there is this, uh, um, there is a, a PO, uh, utang bale, no? utang sa supermarket, and then my application form yan. And the application form requires so many information. Kasama na yung friends, who do you refer? Uh, yung friend mo na yan, na refer mo, siya ba ay anong income niya? You're already sharing something that is beyond the purpose of why you are giving away that information. So that is already a violation of the principle of proportionality. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have to always remember transparency, legitimacy of purpose, and proportionality as we go along this webinar. Because these three guiding principles on data privacy will help us understand better these following discussions. So, in the Philippines, for an establishment like the company or business, there are five pillars of compliance, okay? In order to comply with the Data Privacy Act, you need to do these five things, these five steps. One, you must appoint a data privacy officer, data protection officer. Second, well, the data protection officer must be registered, all right, with the, the, with the National Privacy Commission. So once you have appointed one, all you have to do is uh, fill in the form, all right, I'll appoint him properly through a through an appropriate uh, corporate secretary uh, uh, secretary certificate, and then submit that together with the form uh, provided by the National Privacy Commission, and then you can email it to them. That's already registration. Second, conduct a privacy impact assessment. This is a bit technical. It does not, uh, it, a privacy impact assessment is not something that you just copy and paste, okay? Because a privacy impact assessment addresses the vulnerabilities of your data processing system, the data processing systems that you have in your company. Hindi po ito pwede yung patingin nga ng privacy impact assessment mo dyan sa, sa isang kumpanya, kopyahin ko na lang. No, hindi po pwede yun. That cannot be because the data processing systems of that company may vary from yours. Even if you say you do the same thing, but the system may be different, all right? The environment, the ecosystem, the data ecosystem may be different. So in conducting a privacy impact assessment, it must be specific, directed to the vulnerabilities, peculiar or unique to your organization. Third is the, the creation of a privacy management program. So based on the privacy impact assessment, so okay, like in assess na ninyo yung in yung uh, privacy, and you found out some vulnerabilities, then it will be remediated. It will now be uh, addressed in a privacy management program. 
where it it now uh, it, it enumerates the 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 steps in order to manage the risks or if you want you can transfer the risks but not the liabilities or you can just avoid the risk wag na lang natin gawin to napaka napaka delikado pala no when you did the privacy impact assessment there are so many risks you can manage it pro- provide it in the privacy management program you can avoid it wag mo na lang gawin yan wag na lang natin kolektahin yan or you can transfer it ipasa natin ito sa third party sila na lang ang mag-collect but even if again by the way even if you pass it on to a third party you only pass the risks but not the liability pag yung third party na <clears throat> pinasahan mo para gawin yung collection of data did something that violated the uh, rights of the data subjects you are still liable then fourth would be the implementation of the data and security measures. Hindi pwede yung gagawa ka lang ng policy, hindi mo naman itatry. You know? uh, in, a, in an ordinary, in a, during an ordinary time like this, this month would be considered already something uh, yung uh, meron na tayong mga fire drills. No? That's the same thing with data privacy management program. You do some drills. That's why the fourth pillar would be implementation or drill, conduct a drill, a breach, uh, a breach uh, example. <clears throat> and then finally, you have to be ready in case of data breach. You have to be ready because anytime it will happen. It is not a question of if, it is a question of when. Because given the fast changing ecosystem of uh, the, envi- the, the data, the cyber, cyber uh, realm, Every day may bagong virus, every day may bagong threats. No? And uh, that is something that we need to be ready. So that's why we have to be always ready in case of data breach. Now, uh, since we are talking about data, we have to understand the data management cycle. Kailangan naiintindihan natin ang bawat step, no? every step of the way of our information. Our information is being collected okay by an entity it could be a private entity it could be a government entity so my collection sa collection pa lang you know, there is already management of data for for businesses you have to already be aware of the rights of the data subjects at the point of collection and what are those this is the right to information, the right to consent. Sa collection pa lang, bago mo pa lang ibigay, dapat nagpaalam na, may consent. Hindi pwede yung, hindi mo alam, kinukuha na na pala ikaw ng information. Alright? That's collection. You have to be aware that your data, that your information is being collected and you consented. There is a written consent, if possible. Alright? Then we go to processing. Binigay mo na yung data, all right? And then now that data, your information will now be processed. Gagamitin na nila yon sa kung ano man ang purpose. Again, going back to the th- three uh, guiding principles, the purpose must be legitimate. So kung nagpaalam sa yon na kukunin ko yung data mo, okay, yung information mo para ako ay makapag-deliver sa yon ng mga in-order mo na products. At yun lang yung sinabi niya doon sa notice. That's the only purpose provided in the notice, in the consent. That the reason why I'm, I'm collecting your information because I am a delivery, I am a delivery company, is just for me to deliver it to you, to, to wherever you want it to be delivered. During the processing, that is the only way, that is the only purpose that that information shall be used as well. If one day, you received a message from that company advertising another product that is not anymore part of the purpose. It may be lawful, but that was not part of the notice during the collection stage. Hindi kasama yun sa pinagpaalam eh. Lumagpas. Nagpaalam ka, kukunin mo ang impormasyon ko para ako ay ma- ma-delay, ma-deliver sa akin ang product and now you're using it for something else. That is 
already beyond the purpose. Okay? So processing must be within the, law, the lawful purpose, within the parameters. Okay? And third, that data after collect, after having been collected, in process, ginamit, i-retain po yan. No? Hindi po yan na, na pag nagamit na, itatapo na lang. Okay? Na pag nagamit na, eh, tapos na rin. That data, your information will be stored. Okay? That data will be stored. And it is very important that you know where that information is stored. Bakit? Kasi kasama sa karapatan natin bilang data subjects is our right to access it. Kailangan na-access natin kung ano yung information na nilagay nila about us. Mamaya pala dyan, ang nilagay dyan, ang pangalan ko, address ko, pero mali-mali na yung iba. Mali na yung birthday ko, mali na yung uh, uh, ang iba pang personal identifiable information ko. And that will affect the integrity of my data. So, retention means or uh, requires also the right to access. Where do you retain my data? Okay, kaya sa, sa mga privacy notices, nakalagay din doon, where is the data being stored and how do you access it? Because right to access is one of the rights of a data subject. Kasama din dyan, of course, sa retention, yung right to be secured. No? Dapat secured yung storage of data. Hindi mo pwedeng basta kung saan-saan lang ilagay yung kinolekta na data. So tayo bilang data subjects, we have the right to require uh, the entity collecting our data to divulge, to disclose to us saan mo itatago ang data ko? Saan mo itatago yung mga information ko? Sino ang magtatago niyan? How do you keep it? How safe is my information? Kasi ibibigay ko sa iyo. Pagkakatiwala ko sa iyo for the purpose. Okay? But how safe? Where are you going to store it? And most importantly, how long? Gaano mo katagal ikikip yan? How long will you retain my data? So that's why it is important that for a business establishment, processing a data, you must have a retention policy. Okay? A retention policy. Because that will guide your organization in terms of the rights of a data subject with regard to retention of their information. Okay? So fourth is sharing. This is not uh, common, no? but... Uh, there are a lot of companies that share, nag-share sila ng data. So again, take for example, tatawag ka sa company. <clears throat> Yung company na yan, may call center. Okay? That call center, okay, is the one processing the data, but they're not the one storing it. Kaya lang, na share The information is shared with them. That's why it is important also in the collection stage pa lang, in the collection stage, in the notification stage pa lang, na nakalagay na doon that we are sharing the information you will, you will provide to us to a third party so that intelligent consent ang maibibigay mo. I may trust you, okay? I may trust your company, but I don't trust your call center agent. That's, pwede yun, di ba? So that's why it is important that in the, da in the data privacy notice, the sharing part, the disclosure part is provided. Okay? It must be aligned as well to the purpose of collection. Bakit mo isini-share? What is your purpose, by the way? Okay? Say, for example, delivery. Um, ano ba mga major delivery? LBC, Air 21, lahat yan sila. What if hindi nila employee or third party pala nila yung nagahatid sa mga bahay? Natin. They share it with the third-party riders. Oh, eh, gusto ko LBC ang mag-deliver. Kaya lang wala pala silang rider. Okay, kailangan alam ko yan from the beginning. Kasi I'm giving to you the information. And yet, I did not know na you also shared it pala to somebody else. Ganon din sa banko. Sa credit cards, uutang ako a-apply ako ng credit card. Pag hindi ako nakabayad, kailangan alam ko na ang information ko ay you will share it with a third-party collecting agent. Okay? Yung mga nangungulekta. Sa iba pa, pag lumalapit na turni, may nangaharas. Okay? So, once, once you, you get to that point no, na I'll collect 
collection agency will have to be to, to intervene between you and the bank. You have to know from the point that uh, you applied, you gave your information, ay hala, pag hindi ako nakapagbayad, ibibigay nila ito sa third-party agency to collect my debt. So that's on the sharing part. And lastly, on the disposal. Pwede bang nangulekta ako sa iyo ng information? Sip paper. Papel lang yan. Because data privacy applies both no, on, on manual and electronic data. So say manual data. Sinulat ko pangalan, address, at all other personal information of a person. And then, <clears throat> nung hindi ko na kailanganin, tatapon ko na. Tinapon ko na lang basta-basta sa kung saan-saan. Okay? Napulot ng kung sino man, napulot ng yung mahilig magtanong kung open-minded ka ba. Okay? Tinex ka ngayon. Nagulat ka. Saan nakuha ang informasyon ko? Eh ako'y napaka-pribadong tao. So, you will ask the person, saan mo nakuha ang number ko? And then the person will admit, uh, may tinapon po kasi mga data galing sa ABC company. Eh, sayang naman, ginamit ko na lang po. Eh, may dali sa ABC company. Because ABC company did not comply with the proper requirement and regulation on the disposal of data. Okay? Hindi po, hindi mo na kailangan, eh, pamimigay mo na lang kahit sino. Di ba? Parang pag-ibig lang yan, di ba? Hindi mo po, hindi po, eh, tapos na wala na, eh, kayaan mo na lang. Kailangan may closure. Maayos dapat, di ba? So, ibig sabihin, pag hindi mo na kailangan ang data, you have to anonymize it no? as much as possible. Tanggalin mo yung mga pangalan para hindi ma-identify sino siya. Tanggalin mo yung mga sensitive personal information bago mo itapon. If, if possible, shred it if it's manual. Shred it. If it's not manual, make sure na yung, yung uh, memory if it is a hard drive, yung hard drive na yan, talagang basag na basag. There are a lot of cases uh, in the US, in, in Europe, where yung hard drive ng mga banks, ng mga, ng mga companies retaining so much data, pagtapon, hinahabol, hinahanap, kinukuha, kahit na basag na basag, durug na durug na yan, kaya nila yung re-engineer. Okay? At nabubuo nila yan. At nakukuha nila yung information doon. That's how amazing technology is. That's why this disposal part is also very crucial, very important po ito. Hindi porket patapos na, okay na lang. Okay? Disposal of data is still very important in ensuring that the rights of the data subject is protected. Okay? And speaking of rights of the data subject, these are the rights of the data subject. Lahat po ng gagawin natin ay dapat naaayon sa mga karapatan ng tao sa kanyang, sa kanyang privacy. Okay? Itong seven rights of a data subject as provided in the Data Privacy Act, uh, ito po ay naaayon doon sa pinag-usapan natin kanina na cycle of data management. Right to be informed? Where is this? Upon collection. Upon collection, you must know that your data, your information is being collected. You have to consent. It is not enough that you know. You have to say yes. Okay? Right to object. Sa collection pa lang or sa processing. If in the collection you realize you are asking too much, then you can object. No, I will not disclose it. If during processing, you realize that there is sharing, you can say, oops, stop. I have the right to object. Right to access during retention. Tapos na ang proseso, tapos na ang transaction, you have the right to access that data because that data is not yet uh, deleted. It's not yet destroyed. So you have to have the right to access it, to check if it is correct. Because if it is not correct, then you have the right to correct it. You have the right to delete it. You have the right to block it. And of course, if your right has been violated, you have the right to damages. And the right of transmissibility of uh, rights of the data subject, meaning if I die, my heirs can replace me and ensuring that my data okay, is protected. 
hindi pa patay na yung tao, wala na siyang karapatan sa kanyang data. The heirs, no? transmissibility, the right ng tao na namatay over his data ay nalilipat po yan doon sa kanyang mga naiwan na mahal sa buhay. And of course, right to data portability, yung kahit saan po dapat sana na-access nila yan. But again, this is not uh, uh, yet observed by many because of uh, kahirapan din sa uh, technicality. Ano? Uh, hindi naman lahat ng companies ay equipped para i-make sure na kung sino man ang data ang may-ari, they can access it anywhere in the world. right? So, given those rights of a data subject, how do we now apply it during this time of COVID? Here are some FAQs provided by the National Privacy Commission. First question is, can we collect details of all persons na papasok sa office, papasok yung mga bisita sa office, yung mga bisita sa condo, pwede, yung mga employees, pwede ba namin tutukan ng temperature gun? Kukunin namin ang kanyang temperature. That's, a person, that's an information about a person, right? Pwede ba namin isulat yun, oy, si James, uh, kanyang temperature ay ganito, si Howell ganito, si Iris ganito. That's an information, guys. Is that allowed? Well, according to to National Privacy Commission, yes. Yes, that's allowed. Because while that may be a personal data, okay, okay, it is necessary, okay, to make to ensure the safety. And not only that, not only that, okay, you can collect it without naming naman eh. Okay? You don't provide the name. You don't need to say pangalan at saka yung temperature. No need for that. Just write the temperature. As long as it is not identifiable, okay lang yan. Okay? So you may collect such personal data. Pero wag mo na lang damihan pa. No? Anong pangalan? Anong temperature? May asawa? Ilan ang anak? Anong kinalaman niyan sa pagpapapasok mo sa tao? Ang gusto mo lang naman, masiguradong wala siyang COVID. Di ba? Eh, paano mo lamang may COVID wala? Unang-una, kung may lagnat, may ubo, may sipon. So, yung mga symptoms. Problema lang kung asymptomatic, di ba? Because according to, to research, 80% no, are, are, are symptomatic. So, so th- those information, okay, are, are allowed to be collected. Okay? Second, yung pag-fill in ba, filling out of a, a signing a form amount to consent. May binigay ako sa yung form. Okay? Uh, how well? Pakilagay naman dito yung address, temperature, kung saan ka nang galing, saan ang travel history mo. Pwede na ba yung consent? Kasi nag-fill in ka eh. Hindi mo sinabi doon, I consent. Wala kang tick box. Hindi mo pinirmahan na I agree that you will you will collect the following information for the purpose of this. You did not do that. But you filled in the information sheet. Is that allowed? Yes, that is allowed. Because remember, the collection was not based on consent. Okay? The processing is not based on consent in this at this at that time. Okay? Its lawfulness rests on the mandate of the DOH. Okay? Its lawfulness is based on on the public health necessity. Okay? Yung collection pa po ha, yung collection po ang pinag-uusapan natin, hindi po sharing, wag tayong mauna. Magkaiba po ang sharing sa collection. Collection, kinukuha ko pa lang. Pwede ko bang kunin ang uh, information, nag-fill in ka, hindi mo naman sinabing pumapayag ka, wala kang magagawa, ayaw, kung hindi ka mag-fill in, hindi ka makakapasok sa building. Okay? So nag-fill in ka. Yes, that is allowed because that collection was not founded on consent but it was based on public health necessity. Okay? Can the employer, third question, can the employer disclose personal data collected from employees to third parties? Yes, but the third party must be the government or the DOH. Hindi pwede yung nalaman na sa kumpanya natin may positive sa COVID. Can we announce it to the world na, hey guys, may positive sa kumpanya namin? Pwede naman dahil wala ka namang pinangalanan. Pero kawawa yung mga empleyado nyo. Katatakutan sila ng mga tao. 
the backlash is not just going to be about PR, but it will be about your people. Kawawa sila. Madadamay. No? Isa, dalawa lang yung nag-positive, pero lahat na mga, and not only that, pat, baka pati yung products ninyo, matakot na rin sila. Okay? What you need to disclose is the fact that there was a, an employee, there's an employee who turned out to be positive with COVID, and you disclose it to the appropriate entity, not to the whole world. Let that appropriate uh, entity, government entity, announce it. Okay? Because they're gonna do contact tracing pa naman eh. Hindi naman sa buong mundo yan napunta yung taong nag-positive eh. Ang kailangan lang nilang malaman saan napunta yan at yung kung saan man ang, nag, siya nagpunta, yun lang yung makakaalam. Okay? Hindi yung kailangan buong mundo. Unless yung taong yan ay galing sa buong mundo. So let the whole world know. But then again, that's not, that's not the case. So can the employer ask its employees to submit a declaration kung saan sila nang galing, travel history, sino yung mga katabi nila kasama nung sila ay nagbakasyon? Or pumunta ba sila sa mga areas na may COVID-19? Yes, pwede po yan. Pwede po yan kolektahin. No? Uh, basta ang kailangan lang, kolektahin kung ano man yung kailangan, what is necessary. Anong principle yan under the data privacy? The principle of proportionality. Proportionality. Okay? Next. If a PUI has been proven positive of COVID-19, can I disclose it okay, to everyone within the company? Para, para malaman na rin nila no, na umiwas sila. No? Kung sino man yung, kung nakahalubilo nila, nakahalubilo nila itong manager na ito, o oh, eh, mag-report ka, mag-quarantine ka. The company, sabi ng, ng NPC, may make necessary notices internally. But, but, you don't need to identify the person. Okay? Because what is being protected here is the identifiability of the person. So pwede mo sabihin, guys, may nag-positive sa atin. Uh, we have to take necessary precaution, take a lot of vitamin C, boost your immune system because somebody in the company has turned out to be positive with COVID. Oh, he has been in this particular floor of our building. So for those who are there, uh, let's uh, let's uh, let's observe our health. You know? Let's monitor closely our health. So it follows that the disclosure of the identity of the patient shall be limited to DOH personnel only. Okay, following the PUMPUI protocol. Okay, sa so DOH lang po ninyo iti disclose yan. Can the DOH? Or paano naman kung si DOH yung magdeclare ng mga more detailed information? sa locations of the person or baka sabihin na nga eh pwede ba si DOH mismo magsabi ng pangalan ng mga nagpositive well the problem there is kapit sabihin, sabihin nating no it's DOH it's government okay and they can always raise the purpose of public health necessity but that will be a public uh, policy nightmare that will be counterproductive because if Tayo mga Pilipino mahiyain. Takot tayong mapahiya. If alam natin that DOH will declare our names, will disclose our names, na, uy, positive si James, tingin nyo, magre-report pa ako sa DOH? Sasabihin ko pa kaya na baka wala nang lumapit sa DOH, wala nang mag-umamin na may COVID sila kasi takot silang mahiya. Okay, that will be counterproductive public policy-wise. So, we do not suggest that DOH will do that. Alright? Ganon din yan sa kumpanya. No? Uh, that's gonna be a, a hell of a nightmare for the company to, to declare it. Not only for the company, but most especially to the employees. Sila po yung kawawa kasi sila yung katatakutan. So, can our company, eto na yun, no? can our company issue a press release or statement? Well, announcement should come from DOH. Not from the company. No? Kung po pwede lang. Huwag niyong pangunahan. Let the, the government do it. Kasi sila yung mas nakakaalam sa ang area kung kailangan ba talagang i-announce in the first place. What if wala naman palang ibang pinuntahan ang taong yan? From the airport, dumiretso sa office, napatunayan na may COVID, wala na ibang pinuntahan. Do you need to announce it to the whole Philippines? You don't even need to announce it to the city. Let, announce it to DOH. Tell DOH, you know, we have some someone positive. 
So what are the specific data elements that should that we should collect from visitors? The specific data elements should, that may be collected ano, is according to what the DOH requires. No? So yung mga symptoms, usually yung mga symptoms yan. Ka ba may sipon, may lagnat, may ubo, okay, saan galing, galing ka ba sa bansang may COVID. So ito po yung uh, application ng ating data privacy in times of COVID. However, however, there is a greater risk. There's a greater challenge. And that is the cyber security risks. Okay? Because our ways of life, our ways of work have changed, then there is now a greater risk in terms of cyber security. Ito kasi privacy. Okay? Privacy is a broad concept. But within the privacy, within the right to privacy, is the obligation to protect the information. Okay? How do we protect that information? Through what we call the information security systems or cybersecurity. How do we make sure that the information we collect from the public is safe? Okay? At tayo naman bilang mamamayan, how do we make sure that the information we give, we share to a company is safe? We have to go back to the basic principles of information security. For an information to be secured, you have to understand these three elements. Confidentiality. Confidentiality refers to, well, basically, privacy. Hindi pwedeng kahit sino maka... maka, maka check on it. Alright? Not everyone should be able to have access to the information. It must be confidential. Because you entrusted it for a particular purpose, then that is the only way that that information, your information, must be used. Hindi pwedeng gamitin yan para pagpiestahan ng mga chismoso-chismosa. Okay? Kailangan confidential yan. Availability. Hindi dahil confidential yan, eh, pati yung kumpanya, hindi na makaka-access. Okay? Ano ibig sabihin nun? Ito yung mga biglang nadidelete na data or kaya na-hack yung system natin, na-delete lahat ng information ng mga tao. Availability is very important also. Otherwise, kung hindi yan available, Anong karapatan ng data subject ang na-violate? The right to access. Remember, there was a right to access when you retain the data. If it is not anymore available, you, you, you violated the right to access. And integrity. Integrity is the correctness of the data. Tama pa ba yung information ko dyan? Kasi may mga hackers na hindi naman nila nanakawin, hindi rin nila buburahin ang information mo, Pero guguluhin lang nila. Magkakabali-baliktad na. Magtataka ka na lang kung ikaw ang may utang at ang utang mo ay biglang lumaki kasi nagkagulo-gulo yung data. Okay? So integrity is also very important. So these three are the basic principles no? in information security. So ano ba yung mga threats to information or to, 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 in cyber security? Malware is one. A second is phishing, and maraming mga examples yan. But let us go through them uh, quickly lang. Virus, alam natin yan, no? virus is uh, 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 one a thing na nilalagay, nalalagay sa ating computer, at uh, yan ay may external command na biglang ang computer mo ay nakokontrol na ng iba. Okay? Or may something ng magulo. Warm is, again, a program na nilalagay, na papasok sa computer na hindi na kailangan ng, ng external control. Yan na mismo, yung warm. Yan na mismo yung kakalat at gagawa ng kalokohan sa computer. Trojan horse. This Trojan horse, ito yung nagtatago sa isang legitimate na uh, program, application. Tama, this is a legitimate application, Okay. But within that legitimate application, say Facebook, ano pa ba, Zoom, TikTok, ano pa mga common ngayon, within that, may nakatago pa lang Trojan horse. Okay? Nung dinownload mo, hindi na nakita, nasama yung Trojan horse. Just like the Trojan horse in, the, in Troy, you know, in the movie. 
Yan po yung gugulo sa ating information security. At malalaman natin kung tayo ay napasok na ng isang Trojan horse if the following are already indicative, no? Uh, klaro na. Yung CD-ROM mo, nagbubukas na sa mga PC. Okay? Everything here that you see, that you read, no? are indications of a Trojan attack. Okay? Yung password mo, biglang, hey, ba't hindi na tama? Ba't nagbago yung password ko? Okay? Must be a Trojan or something has has been in, in, inserted in the program. Nagbago na yung password. Siguro yun yung program na yan. Na pag napasok yan, yung password mo papalitan ng password na alam ng hacker. Na ikaw mismo, hindi ka na nakapag, makapasok kasi yung, pro, yung, yung password na palitan na pala. Okay? So, we have a botnet also, adware. Adware, by the way, guys, is yung advertisements. Parating, you won! Okay? Uh, may mga, do you want to get this much? 10 million pesos, 5 million. Ikiklik mo naman. No? Parang, ano to? Or free. Mga free, free. Kung ano mga freebies ngayon na nakikita. Biglang magpa-pop up an adware. Pag-click mo, either manghihingi, or pag-click mo, yun na pala yung virus. Keylogger, ito yung uh, program na kung ano yung tinatype mo okay, sa keyboard mo, nababasa nila. Pag na, na, natamaan ka ng keylogger, whatever you type, okay, they also they also see whatever you type. So kung nagtatype ka ng password mo, nakikita rin nila. Okay? So rootkit, ransom, these are all types of uh, malwares. Okay? So how how are how are these attacks done? In a in a usual in a, in an ordinary time, no. Ganito ito yan sila, no. Backdoor yung dadaan sa dadaan sa ibang programa, sa ibang application para makuha yung yung mga information na nasa computer mo. Advanced persistent threat yung mayat maya sa may brute force dictionary attack. Ito yung uh, tatry lahat, tatry lahat ng mga ng mga passwords, tatry lahat ng mga salita in the dictionary. Bigla na lang, meron kasing program yan eh, no? na isusulat lahat ng mga passwords. Lahat ng mga passwords, itatype niya hanggang sa makuha niya yung password mo. Kaya magtataka ka, or kung definitely lahat tayo naka-experience na, we typed in our password, tama naman yung password natin, and yet, and yet, tinatanong, are you human? Okay? To make sure that you are human, please type this. Or to make sure that you are human, how many pictures do you see? Or click the picture of uh, uh, a car. That is to make sure na ang nag-type ng password mo ay tao. Hindi yung program ng hacker na tinitest lahat ng mga, pro- ng mga password sa dictionary para lang mahulaan ang password mo. Okay, so wag po tayong magalit ha pag may nakita tayo, pag nagta-type tayo ng password. Are you human? Because kailangan minsan na malaman talaga na tao nga yung nagta-type ng password. So DOS, man in the middle, social engineering and spoofing. Ito, ito, ito po ay, uh, itong DOS, ito yung, uh, uh, yung DDoS na biglang sa isang company. Okay, you have a uh, you have your your company has a uh, an online uh, internet in your office. In your office, your internet uh, internet capacity is so much. Okay, say sabi natin na uh, up to one hundred thousand. Ang didos po papasok siya sa kompanya. Okay, gagamitin niya massively yung internet niyo hanggang sa humina na yung inyong takbo ng internet, eh marami kayo. Office yan eh. Umagang-umaga pa lang, inubos na niya yung bandwidth ng internet niyo. So that that hacker can probably perform something else or gusto lang niya talagang pahirapan kayong kumonekta sa internet. Bumagal ang inyong internet. Okay? Man in the middle, pag, pag tayo po ay isang CEO, CFO, okay, uh, target tayo. Target tayo ng mga hacker. Kaya minsan, pag identified tayo na mataas ang katungkulan, sinusundan po tayo ng mga hacker kung saan tayo kukonek tayo sa, sa coffee shop, sa free internet, sa airport. Pag nakita niyang nagbukas ka ng 
laptop, or cellphone at nakikonek ka sa public wifi, yung hacker na yan, papasukin niya yun, okay? ikakat niya yung connection mo. Akala mo, doon ka nakakakonek sa free wifi, pero yun pala, nakakakonek ka na sa kanya. At yung lahat ng information na pumapasa, nakukuha niya. Kasi na man in the middle ang kanyang paraan. Okay? So types of attack, dumpster, shoulder surfing. Ito shoulder surf- surfing, ito yung sa office no, yung titingin sa likod mo. Okay? Tapos nag tinitingnan ko anong tina-type mo, anong password mo, uh, kung, anong yun, kung halimbawa nasa compensation and benefits ka, di ba? Kaya nga dapat may isa sa mga requirements to to ensure privacy is yung physical physical na measure. Meaning, pag yan ay, ang tinatype mo ay mga confidential, talagang only authorized persons allowed here. Kasi nga, baka ma-shoulder, ma-shoulder surfing ka. Okay? Tailgating. Itong tailgating, maraming nabiktima dito. Yung mga pirma, yung papasok ka sa building, magla-login ka. Okay? Login ka, pipirma ka. Yung nasa likod mo, tinitingnan. Pinipicturan pa nga eh. Ano yung sinulat mo, anong address mo. Pati pirma mo doon sa logbook, kinukuha. Okay? Sinusundan ka. So, yan yung mga paraan na nakukuha nila yung kanilang mga tinatawag na information, personal private information. And these are uh, all towards... Uh, a cyber security nightmare. Phishing. Ito po ay isang paraan din no? na pagkuha ng information. So itong phishing, ito yung mag, may email sa'yo, okay? may i-text sa chat room, may biglang may, may link, okay? may mga banner, mga, mga banner, mga advertising. No? Ito yung makukuha. Halimbawa sa email, kung makikita nyo, may ino-offer, scholarship, mga kung ano-anong libre dyan, okay? Pero fake email address ang ginamit. Tapos titingnan mo yung link, sabi, oh, if you want to get this, click this link and provide the information. Eh, ikaw naman, excited, bored ka ngayong panahon ng COVID, gusto mo makakuha ng kung ano-anong mga libre. Pag-click mo, pag-mouse over mo ngayon dyan sa sa link na yan, nakikita mo, ay, bakit parang iba? Iba ang iba ang link. Okay? Hindi yung legitimate. Ganon din po yung mga fake email, uh, fake uh, websites ng banks. Okay? May mga nakukuha tayong emails na akala natin ang pangalan ng bank ang nakalagay. Pero yun pala, hindi yun yung totoong bank website. Hindi yun yung totoong bank na email. You have to just go over the link, mouse over, check mo yung yung address na nakita natin dito sa baba yan ba ang ang yan ba talaga ang website ng bangko mo compare mo sa legitimate bago ka mag-click do not click the link okay just mouse over mouse over click check it okay don't click it check it compare it with the genuine with the original ito ba talaga yung website na yun kasi kung hindi don't click it it must be a phishing email kinukuhanan ka lang ng impormasyon. Phishing, kaya nga phishing, no? Siya, pinangingisdaan ka ng impormasyon. So, wag mong hayaan na makakuha sila ng impormasyon mo. Preventive measures. To, uh, to prevent a phishing, to prevent yung uh, malware, lalong-lalo na sa panahon na ito, dahil work from home is very common right now, you have to restrict physical access to authorized personnel only. Okay, no, isa yan. So kahit na nasa bahay ka, okay, yung laptop mo, huwag mong ipalaro sa anak mo na hindi, hindi pa masyadong marunong sa mga safety. Okay? If you have a program na pinahiram sa'yo ng, ng, ng kumpanya nyo, maybe install it in another laptop, company laptop na hindi nagagamit sa bahay. Kung wala talagang choice at talagang yung personal laptop ng kailangan gamitin, okay lang, but put it in a secured folder password protected folder whatsoever anything and everything about work you have to put it in a separate folder separate container in your computer and make sure that it is password protected so that if anybody uses it uh, wala tayong problema 
Okay? Yung removable media, siguraduhin po natin no, na yung mga removable media natin ay uh, hindi basta-basta nakakakopya sa ating mga laptops. In fact, kung may opisina pa at nag-oopisina tayo, dapat lahat po ng USB ports sa office, no? if there are DPOs here or uh, mga cybersecurity practitioners, we know that we advise management to remove yung mga USB ports, especially if that computer is being used to process huge amount of data. Kasi baka mamaya, lagyan ng USB yan, kopyahin lahat ng information, mga business plan, strategies, customer information, dali tayo. Okay? As much as possible, huwag nating hayaan na magkaroon ng removable, removable media access ang ating mga employees na hindi naman dapat. Okay? Of course, those uh, mga may access level, they can. Internet acceptable use. So, kailangan may, may sinasabi tayong ito ang mga pwede lang puntahan. Okay? Uh, hindi pwedeng kung yan ay company laptop, you whitelist the websites. No? You don't just allow any website to be used. Sometimes, magreklamo ang iba, ang, ang damot naman ng kumpanya ito, ayaw magpa-Facebook, ayaw magpa-Twitter, ayaw magpa-Instagram. You know, it's not about being madamot. It's about being safe. No? Because a lot of phishing na links nasa Facebook eh. No? A lot of adwares also are nasa Facebook. Okay? So, so we have to be careful about it. So ngayon, dahil wala tayo sa office, ang ginagamit nating internet ay internet natin, hindi yung naka-whitelist, tayo na mismo. We have to police ourselves. We have to be you have to, to discipline, govern ourselves, okay? Hindi natin pwede iasa sa gobyerno o sa kumpanya natin ang ating uh, pag-handle uh, ng ating sariling safety. Kasi nasa atin na tayo, nasa bahay lang tayo. So don't just open anything, okay, sa internet. Especially if you're doing work. Make sure that you only use the internet, you access mga websites that are necessary or appropriate to your work, during work. Okay, and then internet security. Don't go to these websites, okay? Don't do yung mga criminal activities. Anonymize as much as possible. But most importantly, the key person in information security is you. Okay? Ikaw. Ikaw mismo ang makakapigil sa mga cyber threats na ito. Walang, mal, walang, walang, uh, walang mga cyber security programs na mas hihigit pa sa iyong vigilance, sa iyong discipline in the use of internet. Okay, so user access, mahalaga din ito na pag nasa work from home ka, kung pwede, you make, you create a different user account for, for everyone, for someone, and then a different user account for work. Okay? Para mahiwalay lang. As much as possible, mahiwalay lang. Password, oh, as much as possible, alphanumeric, it must be complex, change it every three months, okay? And don't write it. Don't write your password. Remember, but don't write it, okay? Okay, so... Uh, remedies. Okay, remedies against mga breach, okay? Ano yung mga remedies natin sa pag na-breach tayo? Tayo bilang mga tao, mga data subjects. Document everything. Document. Kailangan nakalista yan lahat mula nung araw na ikaw ay na-hack, mula nung ikaw ay nakareceive ng text message from your credit card na uh, issuer na nagsabing, your credit card has been used to purchase this map. But you, you did not do it. Diba? You are not aware of it. Nagulat ka na lang, bigla kang may nareceive na text. You document it, pati yung oras, and then report to your bank or vendor. Sabi sa, sa email o sa text, ginamit daw ang iyong card sa ganitong tindahan. You call the tindahan. Tell them, hindi ko po ginamit yan. Report it. As much as possible, document the report. Okay? Call your bank. Okay? Report it. And then, dispute the statement. Pag dumating na yung SOA, dispute the statement. The law provides 30 days for us to dispute anything in the statement. So, pag lumagpas yan, okay, lumagpas yan sa 30 days, that is deemed accepted. Tinatanggap mo. That's why it's important that you review and then you 
dispute the charges if you think that these are not yours, these, these are not your transactions, and then change password or PIN. Okay? Here, mostly nangyayari ito sa financial na information. Okay? Kaya yung halimbawa ko kanina ay credit card. Now, it also happens sa email. Biglang mag, mag uh, prompt yung email. May marireceive ka. Someone attempted to log in to your account last uh, May 10, kagabi, kahapon, at around 10 p.m. Tapos may nakikita kang location, Czechoslovakia or Argentina or kung saan-saan pa, na wala, you've never been there. Okay? So that, you have to also report to your, if it's a company email, you report to your data protection officer, you report your immediate superior if you don't know your DPO, and then you, again, document, and then you report, and then you change your password. Pag, is, is, mas mahalaga ito, no? Kung ito ay about, it, it, this is about uh, financial. Sorry, you report to the bank. And then report to NPC, okay? Report to NPC. If you feel, no? if you think that uh, more information no? have been gathered, have been stolen from you. But kahit na hindi ganun kadami, it's best to already notify the National Privacy Commission. This is the, this is their email address, okay? You you can go and email them na your information has been illegally used, unlawfully used. But if the incident pertains to a company company email, wag po kayong manguna sa DPO. You report to DPO and let the DPO do his or her job of reporting it to NPC. Okay? You only do this reporting to NPC if it's your personal information. Okay? Pero kung yan ay corporate or uh, other business uh, work-related, let the the NPC, the DPO of your company do it. And then follow up. Follow up with your bank. Follow up with NPC kung ano na ang status. Follow up with the vendor kung saan ginamit yung credit card nyo. Okay? So, Follow up, ano po ang mga nangyari na? May mga kaso po ito. May mga kaso sa Supreme Court na na-desisyonan na. Okay? Unahin natin itong kay Spouses Ermitaño versus Court of Appeals and BPI. Noon pa man, noon pa man, sa katagal-tagal na, may nangyayari na pong nakawan at uh, hindi ayon sa batas na paggamit ng credit card. So, ang tanong dito sa kasong ito, Liable ka ba? Are you liable for transac unauthorized, okay? Hindi authorized, no? Transactions made using your stolen credit card. And is notice to bank sufficient to free you from liability? Ang nangyari po dito, okay? August 29, nasnatch po yung bag ni Mrs. Ermitaño. Ni-report po nila, August 29 din, tinawag nila sa bank. Kaya lang August 29 is a Sunday. So August 30 nila ngayon na ibigay yung letter. Letter report. August 30 din, nagkaroon ng unauthorized transactions na 3,000. Maliit lang ano kung tutusin. Pero umabot ito ng Supreme Court. Okay. Noong September 20, Nagpadala ng statement of account ang banko. Sabi, oy, singilin na namin yung 3,000 mo. Hanggang hindi nila binayaran, dahil hindi nga naman sila ang gumamit noon. Ba't nila babayaran? Eh, nagreklamo nga sila, nagletter report na nga sila eh. Hindi sila pinakinggan ng banko. Tuloy-tuloy ang pag-accumulate pag, uh, ng interest hanggang sa dumoble, triple, quadruple na, ang laki na, naging 100,000 na ata ang kanilang utang sa banko from 3,197 because they are not paying it because they don't think that they should because they were not the ones who made the transaction, who made the purchases. So, December 29, nakakapagtaka, nirenew pa ulit ang kanilang credit card. Ano sabi ng Supreme Court dito? Sabi ng Supreme Court, sapat na na si Mr. Mrs. Ermitaño ay nag-notify sa inyo. Dahil nag-notify siya, anumang transaksyon na nangyari sa kanyang credit card matapos ang notification ay hindi na niya pananagutan. Anong sagot ni BPI? Ay, teka lang, Your Honor. Kasi nung nag-notify sila sa amin, okay, 
kami lang yun. Hindi naman namin na notify yung mga merchants. Yung mga yung mga nagbebenta, kung saan gagamitin yan, yung mga malls, yung mga restaurants, hindi namin na notify kaya nagamit pa. Ano sabi ng Supreme Court? Ah, hindi na, na hindi nakasalanan ni Mrs. Ermitaño yun. Kasi wala naman siyang magagawa kung hindi niyo inu-notify yung mga merchants. Ang ang pwede lang magawa ni Mrs. Ermitaño, sabihan kayo. At kayo na ang mag-notify sa mga merchants. Ngayon, kung hindi nyo sila na-notify, kasalanan nyo yun. So kung nagamit pa rin yung credit card ni Mrs. Ermitaño sa kabila ng siya ay nag-report na sa inyo, eh, hindi na pananagutan ni Mrs. Ermitaño yun. Notice to bank is sufficient to absolve Mrs. Ermitaño of any unauthorized transactions. O, di ba? Kaya ah, napakahalaga to notify, to document, number one, because without documentation, you have no evidence. Wala po kayong ebidensya na kayo ay nag-notify. So you have to document and then notify. Second case, Far East Bank and Trust Company versus Chante. Are you liable for an authorized withdrawal from your ATM card while you are in possession of it? Credit card ni Mr. Chan, hawak-hawak niya. Yung kanyang ATM, uh, ATM PIN, siya lang ang may alam ng PIN number niya. Pero noong May 4 to 5, may na-withdraw na 967,000 pesos. ATM card po ang pinag-uusapan natin. ATM card na nakalink sa kanyang credit, uh, sorry, nakalink sa kanyang checking account. Yung checking, check it. Ngayon, Alas 7 ng gabi ng May 4, may nag-withdraw sa may ermita gamit ang card niya. Paapat-apat na libo. Apat na libo, apat na libo. Kaya lang, ang pera na nasa loob ng ATM ni Mr. Chan, Chante, ay 200,000 lang. Pero umabot sa 967,000 ang kanyang na-withdraw ayon sa reklamo ng bangko. Paano nangyari yun? Kasi sa tuwing nag-withdraw, imbes na ang four, ang 200,000, mabawasan ng 4,000, abay kada withdraw na dadagdagan. Baliktad. So nagkaroon ng cyber security issue ang banko. May banko rin tayong alam na ganyan ang nangyari, di ba? Nagkaroon ng naging million, daming naging milyonaryo ng isang gabi. Okay? So ito, nangyari na po yan noon pa man. Ano? So, May 4 hanggang alas 3 ng madaling araw po, mga kababayan. Ganun katagal siyang nagwi-withdraw. Nagwi-withdraw ng paapat na libo, kaya umabot siya ng 967,000 pesos. Kasi kada withdraw niya, imbis na babawasan yung kanyang ATM, nadadagdagan ng amount na winidraw niya. So, May, May 7, nagkaroon ng recon, reconciliation ang banko at ang ATM. Nagulat ang banko. Abay, pa paano nangyari yung isang ATM card ay nakapag-withdraw ng 967,000 in less than a day? Alas 7 ng gabi, natapos alas 3 ng madaling araw, kinabukasan, hindi man lang umabot ng 12 oras. Ang tagal niyang nakapila doon, ano? Ang tagal niyang nakatayo, ka-withdraw-withdraw. May 14 and 18, na- nag-demand letter ngayon ang banko kay Mr. Chante. Sabi ng banko, Oy, Mr. Chante, ikaw ay aming sinisingil sa halagang 967,000 pesos. Sabi, at yung pera na meron ka doon sa iyong ATM na 200,000, kukunin na rin namin. So ang babayad mo na lang ay mga nasa 767,000 kasi yung 200 kukunin na namin. Pumalag si Mr. Chante. Sabi, hindi pa pwede yan. Ay, hindi ko kung pabayaran yan. Sabi ng banko, hindi, ATM mo yan eh. Ikaw lang may alam ng PIN yan eh. Ikaw ang nag-withdraw niyan. Wala pang CCTV nitong mga panahong ito eh, ng mga ATMs. Kaya hindi na patunayan as Mr. Chante pa talaga o hindi. Pero anong sabi ng, anong sabi ng, anong patunay sabi pa? Ano, paano mo nasabi na si Mr. Chante, sabi ng korte? Sabi ng FEBTC, sabi ng banko, ah, wala nga kaming patunay na siya ang nag-withdraw. Pero po nakakapagtaka kasi dahil Nung May 6, nag-withdraw ulit siya. Ngayon, hindi na siya doon sa may ermita. 
lumipat siya doon sa may UN. Malapit pa rin. <laughs> Malapit lang. Sa may kabilang kanto lang. Doon ulit siya nag-withdraw. Kaya lang, hindi na na ka-withdraw. Nalock na eh. At nung nalock na yung card niya, alam niyo kung anong ginawa ni Mr. Chante. Nag-issue siya ng cheque. 200,000. Para ma-withdraw lang yung perang natira niya sa ATM niya. So sabi ng bangko, abay, eh, klarong-klaro, talagang siya yun. Kasi bakit i-withdraw? Di ba? Bakit nung nalak ang card niya, ibigla niyang kukuni na yung pera? Uh, nung sabi ng Supreme Court, anong desisyon ng korte? Sabi ng korte, pumapanig kami kay Mr. Chante. Hindi kami sumasang-ayon sa bangko. Bakit? Sabi ni Mr. ng Supreme Court, una, hindi nyo napatunayan sa kahaba-haba ng kaso, kung magkano ba talaga yung laman ng ATM? May 967,000 ba talaga yan o wala? Kasi hindi napatunayan ng Far East Bank eh. Pangalawa, kayo na mismo ang nagsabi na may cyber issue, may bug, may virus ang system ninyo. Paano nyo ngayon masasabing si Mr. Chante nga ang nag-withdraw niyan? O baka naman, sabi ni Mr. Chante, insider nyo nga lang. Baka naman insider nga yan. At nung tinanong ang bangko sa kaso, posible ba na ako, hindi ako nag-withdraw, pero nabawasan yung pera ko. At nalipat doon sa taong kung sino mang nag-withdraw. Posible daw, sabi ng kanilang expert na bangko. Sa bangko na that is possible when there is a virus. So sabi ng Supreme Court, aba, eh di mahirap itong paniwalaan na si Mr. Chante nga, eh kayo mismo nagsabi may virus nung panahong iyon. Hindi nyo naman naipakita na talagang si Mr. Chante ang nag-withdraw. So mahirap na sabihin si Mr. Chante ang sisingilin natin ng halagang ito. Eh paano po, sabi ng Far East Bank, paano po yung mga aksyon na mukhang kaduda-duda na siya talaga yung nag-withdraw? Kasi bakit niya bakit niya kukunin yung 200, bakit niya uubusin yung pera niya sa amin nung malaman niya na yung pre, yung ATM card niya ay nalak, nalak hindi na, na na ilabas ng ATM. Bakit niya gagawin yun kung hindi siya guilty? Sabay sabi ng Supreme Court, ano ba ang klaseng account ang meron si Mr. Chante? Hindi ba checking? O di ba pag checking talaga namang normal na nag issue ng check eh? Eh bakit nyo, sabi ng Supreme Court, bakit nyo gagawing masama, ba masamain yan? Eh checking account yan eh. Eh talagang pwedeng mag-issue ng check eh, si Mr. Chante. So sa, sa lahat ng ito, hindi na patunayan no? na si Mr. Chante ang nag-withdraw. Pero nasa atin na rin, kanya-kanya na tayong mag-isip kung paano nga ba talaga yun, no? Pero basis sa ebidensya, nagkulang ang FEBTC. At dahil sila ay biktima ng cyber crime, sila ay biktima ng virus, wala silang nagawa. No? Kundi hanggang sa paratang na lang ang kaya nilang gawin kay Mr. Chante. Ito naman kay Akol versus PCCI, April 18, nawala. Hindi naman na-snatch, nawala. No? Nag-report sa bank, ganun din. Nag-follow up report, nag-notify sa merchants. Kaya lang, Nung April 19 to 20, okay? Bago pa niya naibigay ang kanyang ang ang kanyang ah, bago pa na notify ng bangko ang mga merchants, nagkaroon ng purchases unauthorized transactions worth 76,000. Reiteration lang ito sa kaso ni Ermitanyo. Sinabi ulit dito ng Supreme Court and consistent ang Supreme Court, notice lang ang kailangan. Pag nag-notify ka na nawala ang ATM mo, ang, ang, ang iyong credit card, nanakaw, tapos na ang laban, kung ano man ang gagawin, dyan sa credit card mo na yan, hindi mo na pananagutan. E paano ngayon, attorney, kung hindi ko naman alam na nawawala? Kasi hindi naman talaga nawawala. Pero, nagamit. Nagagamit. Nagagamit kasi nakuha nila yung credit card number ko, CVC number ko, kasi uh, nakasave sa aking computer, na pasok ng virus, nakuha. Again, dahil hindi mo naman alam, once you know, you have to report right away. Huwag mo na antayin na may, may SOA pa. Okay? That's why it's important to always check 
check your uh, if you have online accounts. Every now and then you check kung may mga transactions ba na hindi naman ikaw ang gumawa. Okay? At saka wag na wag it's important no yung mga preventive measures. Wag kayong basta-basta magki-click ng kung ano-ano uh, links sa email, no, sa chat, sa Facebook, yung mga mga games sa Facebook, yung mga uh, anong itsura mo pag 50 years from now or sino mapapangasawa mo at kailan ka mamamatay, yung mga ganong klasing mga laro na maaring kumukuha ng information sa iyo. Avoid those things. Paano naman po, attorney, yung mga parang kay Mr. Chante, uh, hindi kailangan may physical na card kasi ngayon may may mobile banking na online banking. Pwede na akong may pera ako sa ATM ko, ilipat ko lang sa isang sa isang app at yung app na yan pwedeng mamili. Mamili ng kung ano-anong bagay. Tapos yun pala, hindi naman pala akin. Hindi 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 naman pala ako ang gumawa noon. Yung pera ko nabawasan sa bangko. Tapos hindi naman nalipat doon sa aking app. At hindi naman ako yung bumili. Anong gagawin ko? You apply the principles na similar to Chante. No? Kung hindi naman ikaw, at nakita mo naman agad, you reported it right away, okay? you can always raise the, you can always raise a defense pag ikaw naman ang kinasupan. Okay? Paano naman po kung ang kumpanya ang naging biktima? Pag ang kumpanya po ang naging biktima, again, document everything because in the notification stage, you have to inform the National Privacy Commission what have you done to immediately remediate the issue. Do you have to also come up with a data? Well, if you don't have a data privacy, that's gonna, a privacy policy, that's going to be a problem. That's why right now, as we move along a new normal where everything, or if not a lot about everything, is going to be online, please have your data privacy policy already. Okay? Then comply with legal requirements. If there is a requirement for notification to NPC or to the people, to the affected data subjects, you have to make this uh, notification within 72 hours. Then manage your PR, your networks, and customers. Kasi sila yung pinakamahalaga. Okay? Kasi sa kanila yun eh. And then cultivate the culture of privacy. In all of this, the, the privacy must become our culture, must be our way of life. Hindi na po pwede itong nasa papel lang. Okay? So, ito po lahat, uh, ito po ay ano lang, no? eh, these are guides but it's all bo it all boils down to us and our way of life. We have to change because we've already we're already witnessing uh, the digital acceleration. So we have to change with the time. Otherwise, biktima tayo ng mga ganitong klaseng kalokohan. Okay? Thank you very much and magandang hapon. Sir Howell? Wow, thank you Attorney James Earl Chu. Ang galing galing. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for a ton of knowledge, new knowledge for me, especially uh, because I've been conducting workshops on soft skills and essential skills, this is something that is technical, legal, highly informative, and everybody now in, in this new normal would fall victim if we didn't know what you have just shared. So thank you, sir, uh, James, Attorney James. Now, don't you go away, everyone. Ayana. Uh, for everyone who'd like to ask, sir, Attorney James, Attorney James, a question. Type it, type in your question at the Q and A box. We'll be back in two minutes' time. You know what? What I will do? I will check my wallet if all my credit cards and debit cards are still intact. So don't go yes. away, everyone. <laughs> uh. So, attorney, pwede ka kumuha ng kape or anything. We'll we'll just pause for two minutes. Balik tayo, grabe na pagganda nito. Don't go away. We'll be right back in two minutes, everyone.